Hi, I'm Doug. Welcome to Camino 2020, where I am gearing up for my Camino next year and hopefully taking you along with me in this journey of discovery through gear and planning and training. You know, there are a lot of big debates surrounding hiking gear out there. Shoes versus boots, hammock versus tent, waterproof versus standard, bag versus quilt, trekking poles versus stick, stove versus cold soak. But the one that I would like to talk to you about today is that between the water bottle versus the bladder. So this is my water bottle and this is my bladder. This is Nalgene, pretty much industry standard for big water bottles. And this is the Camelback. Now I bought this when I bought my Deuter Day Pack. It has been with me on numerous hikes and I love it for what it is. I am also quite happy with the bottle. Now I am not here to tell you which one of these you should bring with you on your hikes or on your Camino. I'm just going to tell you what has worked for me, what I've noticed about carrying both of them and just help you with your decision. There is no right or wrong answer to that question although there are some that are more right than others. You would never see any self-respecting ultra lightweight backpacker carrying an algae bottle. Why? Because they're fairly heavy. Now this is the silo. It's 48 ounces but even the 32 ounce, which is what you would normally see around on the trail, weighs a little over six ounces. Now, Nalgene does have an ultralight version that gets you a 32 ounce bottle for three something ounces, but in general, these are fairly heavy. Why? Because they're rock solid, tough items. You can just beat these things to death and they're gonna be fine. The lid is very strong, the strap is very strong, even full of water, 48 ounces, worth of water. You can just hang this off of a carabiner or on your pack. It's certainly better than carrying like a hydro flask or one of these um, steel bottles which can weigh a pound all by themselves. You can get uh, two or three of these Nalgene bottles before you hit that kind of weight. For ultralight backpacking, a lot of guys are just buying water bottles and just reusing them. Uh, they fit well with Sawyer water filtration units. They come with handy little caps. I mean, they're really great and they weigh practically nothing and you can get them in a liter size. So let's start with the bladder. The way this works is that you fill this bag up with water and then it fits inside your pack. Usually up against the back, there will be a handy dandy little pocket made specifically for the purpose of putting in your hydration bladder. This is the Camelback. I think this is called the Antidote. And the way this works, if you've never seen one before, is that you have a large top hole that opens up. You pour water in here until the bag fills. And these come in various sizes. And then you attach a hose to this bottom piece here and hang it upside down so that it's like a gravity fed water system that terminates at the end of the hose at a bite valve, which has a little shut off lever right here. And this goes in your backpack. The tube comes through a hole in the backpack. And when you get thirsty, you just wipe the valve, water comes out, you let go, you keep hiking, nothing's stopping you with one of these. Okay, now that's the good news with the bladder system is that it's very convenient once it's working. And I would say for a day hike, it's fantastic. If you know how much water you're gonna need, and you can get that all set up and loaded in your backpack and everything packed just right and off you go. It's a great way to stay hydrated while you're on the move. You don't have to stop for anything. However, for longer term, if I'm going to go on an overnight, I do not choose bladders for a number of reasons. One of the first reasons is that I am only comfortable using a bladder for water. If I want Gatorade or something else, some kind of mixed drink, I don't really want to pour that in here because I don't want it gumming up the works. There are a lot of parts to this system. And whatever I put in there, I don't really want to be tasting it later. Further, if I'm going to use any kind of a mix, I can't really do it very well in here. I mean, I suppose I could drop it in and shake it. Um, but again, now you're dealing with particles. You've got a bunch of junk in there. Um, when I'm hiking, I keep some things just for water and some things for other kinds of juices or mixes. So I end up having to carry a bottle anyway. The next problem is that when the bladder goes in the backpack, it looks really nice and neat to have that pocket back there when the backpack is empty. However, once the backpack is full, which it will be once you're done packing, getting that bladder in and out can be a real pain. First of all, the hose connects all the way at the very bottom. So when you're pulling it out of there, you better hope it doesn't pop off, hope there's no leaks, 
as it maybe backfills your backpack. But let's assume everything works fine. You rip that thing out of there, you've got it. Now you've got to snake the hose through the hole. Okay, now you got the whole thing out. Once you've refilled it, you've got to get it back in, but guess what? Now all of your stuff has compressed the pocket where the hydration bladder goes, and you're gonna to have to cram it in there. That can be difficult. Nobody wants to have to unpack their pack just to get the bladder in and out. Another difficulty is that when you are hiking long range, it's important to stay hydrated, so it is important that you are able to sort of track your progress as you go through your hydration. With a bladder in the backpack, it's basically impossible to do that. So as you're drinking, you don't know. Do I have another liter back there? Am I almost out? Uh, am I gonna make it to the next water source? And so that can become a problem as well. Another issue is just filling it up. It's rather awkward. You've got this bag sloshing around in this big giant hole that you open up to get the water in. So if you're trying to fill up at a drinking fountain or something that requires another hand to turn or use while you're filling it up, that can be awkward as well. Another thing I don't like about bladders is the cleanup. Uh, I'll post a video in the comments below of uh, one of my favorite gear testers explaining how to clean out a bladder system. The video is over 10 minutes long and there are time-lapse sections in it. It's difficult. It requires a certain amount of supplies to be able to clean it out and you've got to do it because if you leave that water in there, it's going to collect in the bladder, it's going to collect in the hose, it's going to collect at the mouthpiece, and any of those water collection points can become moldy if you don't keep it clean on a fairly regular basis. Now, I don't know about you, but at the end of an 8-10 hour walk, the last thing I want to do is drop my pack and then spend 15-20 minutes cleaning out my bladder, that sounded weird, in order to prepare for the next day. So for all of those reasons, I'm just not a big fan of the hydration bladder on trips that are gonna be longer than a day. So let's talk about the bottle. Uh, a couple nice things about this. Number one, Nalgene gives you their famous wide mouth. When you're hiking, sometimes it's nice to have a little straw or a squirt bottle for your water, but the wide mouth can be very handy. For example, going back to the different kinds of drinks. If I wanna put powder in here, very easy to just shake this up easy to get in, easy to even get something in to stir with if I need to. This is also a lot easier to clean. One thing I do not like about the wide mouth is that when I'm drinking, the sides tend to want to spill out over the side of my face. That is unpleasant. That gets whatever you're drinking all over you. Other people have apparently been annoyed by this as well, and so they've invented little guys like this. So this is sort of an adapter. It just goes right in there, and it turns your wide mouth Nalgene bottle into a nice handy sipping bottle. If you are concerned about filtration, Life Straw offers a cool little system. This fits right inside the Nalgene bottle and boom, you've got a filter built into your bottle. So as you're drinking, the liquid inside is being filtered and now you don't have to worry about getting some nastiness in your water. If you're getting really desperate for hydration and all you see is like a lake or something, you can just run this bottle through there, pop this on as your top, and you've got a water filtration system built in to your bottle. So as far as convenience for carrying and convenience for cleaning, I personally prefer uh, a bottle over a bladder when it comes to long-term hikes. Now again, on day hikes, when I know how much water I'm gonna need, and I'm not gonna be packing and unpacking and having to go multiple days where the bladder needs to be washed. Hiking bladder is fantastic. I've used it before, I'll use it again. But when it comes to long-term hiking like the Camino, my personal preference is gonna be a bottle. I hope this video has helped you out as you are planning for your Camino or just any kind of hike. If it has, please give the video a like, hit that subscribe button, click the bell so you get future notifications on videos. I'm Doug, this is Camino 2020. Buen Camino.